and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new stamp set, Wild Wolves, and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing this mini stamp set, Wolf Before and Afters, and its coordinating dies. And we're going to be introducing our brand new Starry Sky Background Hot Foil Plate. I am so excited about this video, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, we're going to look at the Wild Wolf stamp set, and it has this adorable duo of wolves, and it's one of my favorite images ever. I think it's so cute. We also have a Howling Wolf, and then we have these little wolf pups. And what's really cute about them is that they can be little pups, or they could be wolves off in the distance. We also have this really great big tree that's wonderful for helping set scenes, and we have a little tree as well. We have a moon for the sky, and then we have this super cute little crow, and I love putting him in the trees. We have this big rock, which is awesome for putting either the duo of wolves or the howling wolf on top of. And then we have a little rock also to help set the scene. And this adorable little trio of stars that I love so much, and a solid star too. We also have these cute little tiny phrases that are fun for stamping around your critters. We have caw for the crow, yip for the pups, and also wag, which is too sweet. We also have this word howl and a smiley face that you can add into the moon, which is really cute. We have these little wag lines that you can add around the wolf's tails, and I think they are just so sweet. They just make me smile, and they really add a lot of movement. And then we have some really great sentiments. So we have a larger howl. Then we also have, I'm glad you're in my pack, which is such a sweet sentiment. We also have, it's your day, and then enjoy it to the fullest, which I love with a full moon in the background. We also have, I miss you, and I love you, and you could combine either one of those with a howl lot. So it could be, I love you a howl lot, which is so super cute. Now that we've stamped out all of our images, it's time to start adding some color with some Copic markers. And I absolutely love coloring these wolves in both grays and browns. And my favorite grays for them are these warm grays. I think they look just so absolutely cute in these grays. And the other thing that I love about wild wolves is that we designed it to be perfect for Halloween and to be perfect for winter, and we're going to be showing you both of those ideas today. And it's also great for year-round because these wolves are just adorable, and that's why we created all of these cute year-round sentiments that you could also mix and match with a happy Halloween or a happy winter or season's greeting sentiment. So I love these guys, and I love that they go throughout our whole fall and winter season and even into spring and beyond. These guys are just too cute. So you can see that I'm adding shadow beneath their kind of little scruff there and at all the kind of rounded edges of these cute little guys. I just love them so much. They just come to life as you start to add all the marker. And then for his little mustache and scruff, I always like to keep that kind of like a lighter warm gray so that it almost looks like it's like a little bit dirty. I just think it looks really pretty like that. And then we'll give them some rosy cheeks. Now for the Howling Wolf, I'm now going to try some browns with this guy. And I really like this brown combo. It reminds me of those like reddish brown wolves. And one thing you can do too is like go to Google and look up wolves and get some really cool ideas just from nature on how to color these adorable little critters. And this little Howling guy, I mean, he is just too sweet. I love him so much. And here you can see I've started with my dark marker. I go into the medium and then into the light. And then those very lightest markers are what I'm going to use for his little kind of like scruff and mustache area. I'm sure there's official terms for those, but I'm not quite sure what they are, but he is just too sweet. And I'm blending them out with the colorless blender as well. I like adding a little rosy pink into their ears and also giving them little rosy cheeks. And I added some of that rosy pink into the howling wolf's mouth too. And there's something about that that really brightens them. Now, for these little pups, what I'm using is some neutral grays, and it's kind of more of a bluey gray, so it's just a different look depending on what kind of card design you're going for. And I love these little pups. I think they're so fun for combining with the duo to create like a little family, which I think would be so sweet on a holiday card. I also like that you can put them in the distance and have them be almost wolves that are farther away, and we're going to be showing you that in a card in just a little bit. 
Now, next up, we're going to work on coloring in our trees. And here you can see I'm using some E39 markers. You can really use any kind of browns, but I also think these would be really interesting in grays too. I just think they would look beautiful and kind of like a spooky Halloween scene. And what you'll see I did here is I just made kind of like random darker areas on the tree and then just kind of kept blending them out. And I feel like that kind of gave it this cool spooky tree look. So you can see I brought in that like darker marker medium, uh, a lighter medium, and then into my lightest marker. And normally I don't use so many markers on my critters and stuff, but I was just having a lot of fun coloring and I just brought out all the markers for these guys and I think they turned out really fun. So now we have this shade of brown for the tree and for the next tree I'm going to use those E40 markers we used on the howling wolf for the tree and I like this because it kind of feels like it's a tree at nighttime, which I think is a really cool look. Now for the moon, you could do something like yellows or warm grays. You could even do neutral grays. You can just play around with what's gonna look really great in your scene, but sometimes a yellow moon is really cool for a Halloween scene. And this warm gray moon can be really nice for more of a winter scene. I'm going to color in my cute little crow. I just love him so much. We have a lot of crows in my neighborhood, so I just think he's so sweet, and I love stamping him out with my son. And then we'll do a little bit of a little orange beak on him. And then I don't usually use my cool grays, but Eleanor from the design team had used cool grays on the rock, and I thought it looked so cool. And what I like about adding shadow to this rock is I'm just gonna follow the stamp, the lines that are on the stamp already, and that's gonna give me a really great place to put the shadow and then just keep blending it out with my markers. And you can see that as my markers dried, there wasn't enough definition there. So I just went back in with my darkest marker and I just kind of layered that again along those stamped lines. And I think that gave it a nice pop on the rock and I can just blend that out just a little bit with my lighter markers. Now for the stars, of course, we'll add a nice bright yellow. And now all of these stamps are colored in and they are too cute. Now we're gonna take a look at the wolf before and after stamp set. And this has this super cute little sitting wolf. And then we have a howling wolf in the same position. We also have some really great sentiments. I love that there's some tiny sentiments and then a big sentiment here. We have how you doing, which always makes me laugh. We have a roo for our howling wolf. And then we also have I love you forever. And then this is my favorite sentiment of all of them. It's how always be your friend, which I think is just so very sweet. And now just like we did with our wild wolf stamp set, we're going to add some color with our Copic markers and I'm going to go with my favorite warm gray combination. Now this set is a before and after set and we have lots of other before and afters in different designs and it can be used in a lot of different ways. Of course you can just use these adorable critters and you can even mix and match them with the wild wolves but it's also meant to be used in our magic picture changer interactive die and we're going to be showing you that towards the end of the video. The other way that you can use these guys is a before and after with an opening card so you can have your sitting wolf on the front and when you open it he's howling on the inside. So there's a lot of cute ways to use these before and after images and this little howling wolf I mean he is just so sweet so we'll be showing you how to combine these guys with wild wolves and how to use it in the magic picture changer and our last step is to take that rosy pink again and we're going to give some little pink cheeks and add a little bit of pink into his howling mouth and here you can see how cute these guys are and I wanted to show you a comparison with the wild wolves they are just so sweet and I love that you can mix and match them together so here we have the coordinating dies for wild wolves, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. You can go ahead and take that die and line it up with your stamped image, hold it in place with some low tack tape, and then you can run them through the die cut machine and you'll have beautifully cut out images every time. And then here we have a look at all of the images from the set and oh my goodness, they are so cute and they are so much fun to mix and match. I love the look of layering the wolves on top of the rock. It's such a cute way to kind of feature them. And you can see that big tree all around. You can also add the pups to either side of that duo to create a cute little wolf family. You can see we have the smaller tree for our little pups and they can kind of feel like they're in the background. And then of course, stars and a moon for setting the scene. We also have that tiny little rock, which the little guys can stand on top of, which is adorable. And then that crow that can go into the tree, which is so super cute. You can also have this little guy kind of leaning up on top of the rock, which I think is another cute look for different scenes. And of course, our duo can go on top of the rock too. 
Now here are the coordinating dies for wolf before and afters which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We can take our coordinating dies and line them up with our stamped images, hold it in place with some low tack tape. We can then run it through the die cut machine and we'll have perfectly cut out images every time. Then here is a look at the two wolves in the wolf before and after set. And here is how you can mix and match the wolf before and afters with the wild wolf stamp set. You can even put the little pups next to them or they can share the rocks. So you can have that style of howling wolf or this style, which is so super cute. I love that you can mix and match all of these elements together. The tree is so cute with the wolf before and after wolves and the scenes that you can create are just adorable. And I am so excited about this video because we're creating cute cards. We're creating a brand new Tada Diorama interactive card. But before we start doing that, we're gonna take a look at the starry sky background hot foil plate. And we're gonna add this to our hot foil machine. We're gonna press that timer button. It's gonna flash for about a minute. And when that light goes solid, that means we're ready to start foiling. We're gonna take our foil and place it face down on top of our hot foil plate. And then we're gonna take a piece of cardstock and put that down on to that foil. The machine comes with two plates that we're gonna layer over top. And then we can take this whole platform here, we're gonna pop that off and we're gonna run it through the die cut machine off camera. Then we'll bring that back and this is the magic. As you lift up that paper and we peel off this, oh my goodness, it is so gorgeous. Look at that starry sky, it's the most perfect night sky. Well, the cool thing about the starry sky background plate is that we were thinking of different things with it. We thought it would be beautiful for night skies, like for camping scenes, but also really cool for Halloween. But it also makes the most beautiful snowy background. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this kind of like rainbow holographic foil and some mermaid cardstock, which is this great turquoise. We'll lay that on top. Of course, we'll put our two plates. We'll take the whole platform off. We'll run it through the die cut machine off camera and then bring it back. And is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. I'm obsessed with this and now it reads a little bit more like winter and snow. So I love that this starry sky background is so perfect for so many different types of cards. And here you can see the comparison between the two of them. We have our beautiful night sky and then we also have our really pretty wintry snowy sky. So I love that there's so many different ways to use this. So now we're gonna start creating a card and we're actually gonna start off with this starry sky background hot foil plate. We're gonna add it to our machine and we're gonna press that timer button. It's gonna flash for about a minute. And when it goes solid, we're gonna be ready to hot foil. And we're gonna be using that same kind of like rainbowy holographic foil. And we're gonna lay that face down onto our hot foil plate. But this time we are gonna foil onto some pattern paper. And this combo, I am so excited about it. This is one of our brand new favorite flannel papers in this gorgeous navy color. We're gonna put the two plates on top and then we'll take the whole platform and we'll run it through the die cut machine off camera and bring it back. And I can't tell you, wait till you see this, it's so pretty. So we're gonna lift off that hot foil and have our big reveal of the most beautiful snowy sky on this cozy flannel paper. I am just in love. Next, we're gonna trim this piece down to be a standard size card size of four and a quarter by five and a half. And we're also gonna take out a standard size card base and we're gonna layer this whole beautiful panel on top. Oh, I love this so much. Then to help start setting this wintry scene, we're actually gonna be using the spooky forest backdrop die. And we're gonna die cut this beautiful white shimmery cardstock. And now what was a spooky tree is gonna become a winter tree. Once again, another product that you can use in a bunch of different ways, which I just love. Now for this snowy scene, we didn't really want the grasses on there and they're really easy to just trim off. So you can see we're just gonna trim off all of those grasses because we're gonna be working with a bunch of snowy hills. And here you can start to see how this beautiful winter scene is gonna form. Oh my gosh, with that plaid sky. Ah, oh, I am just in love with it so much. So here we have some pixie dust cardstock and we're gonna create a bunch of snowy hills. So we're gonna be using one of the original stitch till side borders here. And I love these because you can put them at different angles to get different looks. So this one we're gonna put at a pretty steep angle to get a nice steep hill and also make a little mark with a pencil at the bottom there so we know exactly where to trim that off so that it'll be the perfect height. 
Then next, to create another snowy bank, we're gonna be using a simple stitch till side border with that same pixie dust cardstock. And that's gonna give us a different look, and I really love the mixture of these two hills. So of course, we can hold that in place and then run it through the die cut machine, and then also make a little pencil mark so that we know where to trim the height. I always like to leave a little bit of extra so I kinda of know where that height is. Now, at this point, I was like, oh, it might look nice with a third hill, the kind of like rule of threes, right? Threes together tend to look really nice. So we're gonna take another stitch till side border and have it going in the other direction and run that one through the die cut machine. And now you can see how these are gonna layer and it's just gonna look so beautiful. So then we can make another pencil mark and just trim those down so they're the perfect height. And now we're gonna start adding some tape runner behind these and layering them onto our hot foiled snowy scene onto that flannel paper. So we're gonna add both of the back hills on with some tape runner. And then that front hill, we're actually going to be layering it behind that spooky forest backdrop because that's gonna give us some really cool dimension. Then we can add some foam tape and foam squares to this whole spooky forest backdrop and then layer it over top of our starry snowy scene. And that's gonna give it that kind of shadow box feel with that nice height of the trees that I think is just beautiful. Next, we're gonna take out the Wild Wolves stamp set, and we're gonna be layering these cute little wolves in a wintry scene. So we're gonna be starting off with the little duo of wolves, and we'll add some foam squares to the top and then some tape runner at the bottom so that they layer with that popped hill that we have in the front. Then while these little pups are super cute next to the duo, like a cute little wolf family, they're also really fun for putting on these back hills because it's really gonna feel like the wolves are far away, which I think is a really fun look, especially with that small tree. So I love the look of this perspective. So we'll layer those guys on and then we'll take his other little wolf friend and add him back there. And this scene is looking too cute. Now, to create a frame, we're gonna use the largest stitched rectangle frame, and we're gonna be using some more paper from the Favorite Flannel Collection. Um, and this color is just gorgeous, and I love the two layers of flannel. It feels so cozy, and all of these blues and whites, oh, it's just perfect for winter. So we're gonna layer some tape runner all over this frame, and then we can add it to the Spooky Forest backdrop, which is a really fun way to get a different look with this backdrop. Next, we needed a holiday sentiment. So we're gonna take a look at the Winter Bird stamp set, which has some really, really great sentiments in it. And I really love the season's greetings here. So we're gonna be using that sentiment from those Winter Birds. And we're gonna be stamping this out in some deep sea ink, which is kind of like a navy color. And I think it's gonna look really pretty with this design. We'll stamp that out on some white cardstock and then we're gonna take a sentiment banner die and we're gonna line it up with that sentiment so that we have the flag on one end and then we're gonna have a flat end on the other because it's gonna be kind of coming out from our frame. So we can hold that in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine. And then we can take that and start to layer it in the scene. And I think the look of it being kind of over the trees is just so pretty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some foam squares and also some tape runner to this. And we're actually gonna tuck that under the frame so that it looks like it's coming out from the frame. And I feel like that makes it look just kind of like a really continuous pretty design. And then we can layer that over that tree, which looks so pretty. And then we can just take some scissors to trim off any of the excess. Now, at this point, we kind of looked at the card and said, gosh, it's kind of missing something there over to the right side. So we thought, why not add another one of these little trees in the background? So we're gonna layer that there. And I feel like it just kind of filled in that section and kind of brings the stamped images towards the die cut trees. And now this card is all done. And look at those beautiful glittery stars and snowflakes. I mean, isn't that the most beautiful thing? I love it so much. Oh my goodness, this card is just so much fun. And next up, we are gonna create the Tada Diorama, which is our brand new interactive die. And we're gonna do a Halloween scene. And so we're gonna start off with this main base piece. And we're gonna die cut this from some white cardstock because we're gonna be making a really fun Halloween sky on this. We're starting off with milled lavender, which is a nice light purple, and then working our way up through the purples with wilted violet and dusty conquered. And then we're gonna finish it off with some black soot ink. So we want the lightest part to be towards the center and the darkest part to be towards the outside. And that's what's gonna give it kind of this like spooky glow in the center, almost like the moon is giving it a glow. And so there you can see, we're just gonna start building up the color and going back and forth between the colors to make sure that they blend nicely together. 
Then as we bring in that wilted violet color, I feel like you can start to see that beautiful Halloween sky form. Then the magic really happens as we add the black soot. That's when you really get this nighttime sky feel. And I always love seeing this happen because I just think it looks so beautiful. Once we add the black soot, I always like to kind of go back to that darkest shade of purple and also the light and just kind of make sure they all blend together nicely. And I think that's looking so beautiful. Now here we have the nighttime sky stencil and also some Yeti ink. And we're gonna be using some post-its just to mask off areas around the stencil so that we're only inking up that one cloud. Then we'll use that white pigment ink, it's called Yeti, and we're gonna layer that over the cloud. And that's gonna create this really kind of cool, spooky clouds over that beautiful purple night sky. And so we're gonna start layering these cards all throughout the scene and just kind of seeing how they look. So we'll keep adding one, take a look, add another one. They look really great when they kind of go off the edge because it makes the sky feel like it keeps going and going. So that's looking really good. And now we're gonna do some splatters to add some more texture. So this is some black soot ink. We're gonna smear it on the craft mat, add a little bit of water, pick it up with a paintbrush, and then just tap that paintbrush and create cool little splatters all over the scene. Now we're also going to be repainting the same thing with some white acrylic paint. This here is some Copic white that just happens to be what I have. Any kind of white acrylic paint will look great. And we're just going to splatter that over this whole sky. And now we're going to take this whole thing and set it aside to dry while we work on other parts of the Tada diorama. So here is that main base piece again, and we're going to die cut some of this gray textured cardstock. Then we're going to use the window creator piece and we're going to layer that in the center hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and now we'll have this perfect window frame that we'll be able to add to our Tada diorama in just a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna die cut the band piece from the Tada diorama two times. And it has these little score marks on it and we are gonna fold along those little score marks on both ends of both of the band pieces. And if you've never made a Tada diorama before, make sure to check out our intro video. We will link it in the description below. Next, we're gonna flip our frame over and then we're gonna add some adhesive to those little tabs that we just folded on both the top and bottom of both of the bands. Then what we can do is layer it right onto the back of our frame and you'll see that there's a little notch in the band and there's a notch on the frame. We're gonna line those up. You can just kind of eyeball it there in the center and press down. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna work great no matter what. So we're adding some adhesive to the top and bottom tabs of the second band piece. And then we're gonna line up those notches again, eyeballing it there in the center, and then we can press down to secure it in place. And now we're gonna take this window frame and just put it aside because we're gonna start working with our side panels. And we've die cut two of the side panels for the Tada diorama. Next up, we're going to be using the slot creators here. And so we're gonna take both of those. And the slot creators are really great because they have this little foot on them. And you want that little foot to be pointing towards the biggest panel there on those score lines that you can see on our side panel. It's going to point towards that biggest panel. It's going to go between those two score lines and the arrows are going to point down to the bottom. That's going to remind you to put them right along the bottom, center it, and then hold it in place with some low tack tape. Then for the next one, you can see I have my foot. It's pointing toward the second panel. Oop, that's not right. I'm going to flip it over, make sure it's pointing to that bigger panel. And then we're going to put it between the score lines, making sure those arrows are down there at that bottom edge. We'll hold them in place with some low tack tape. And then we can run them through the die cut machine. And that's going to create the slots that are going to be perfect for putting in our inserts in the Tada diorama. Next, we're gonna fold along those score lines that the die created for us. So we're gonna fold back away from ourselves on each of those lines. And then I like to use a bone folder so that I can make sure that those folds are nice and sharp, just like that. And so we're gonna do that on both of the pieces. We're gonna fold back away from ourselves on each of those score lines. And then we'll go ahead and reinforce those with the bone folder. Now that we have our side panels all folded and we can bring back that beautiful background that we created earlier, it's dry now and we can start adding our adhesive to our side panels. And we're gonna be adding the adhesive to that little skinny side of the side panels. You can see that with those score lines there, we're gonna add some tape runner on both of the pieces onto that skinny panel. Once we have some adhesive there, we're gonna pick up one of our panels, fold it in half, and we're gonna make sure that those slots are there towards the bottom. 
Then we can go ahead and line that up with the edge of our main base piece. We're gonna center it so you'll see a little bit of purple is gonna peek out at the top and bottom. That's exactly how you want it to look. And then we're gonna press down to secure it in place. Then we'll do the same thing, fold in half, make sure our slots are at the bottom, and now we're just gonna actually butt it up against the other one and just press down. It takes all of the guesswork out of it for you. You can just press down and secure it in place. And now both of our side panels have been added to our main base piece, and you can start to see the ta-da diorama form. Next, we're gonna take out the Tada Diorama Hillside inserts, and we're gonna be die cutting some black sparkle cardstock, which is so beautiful for Halloween. And you'll see that there's these little score lines at the top and bottom on both sides of the hills. And so we're gonna fold back along those little score lines on both of our hill pieces. So we've done that one, and now we'll go ahead and do the other ones. And this is gonna help us be able to add it into the slots of the Tada Diorama. And so that's what we're gonna do now. You'll see that back slot there, we're just gonna feed it right through. And then once we feed it through, we can go ahead and open those tabs up and that's gonna help hold your hillside insert in place. Then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. We'll add it into the slot and then we can open up those little tabs there to hold it in place. Then we'll repeat the same thing with the other hillside and the other slot. We'll add it to the slot and we'll open up our tabs. And then we'll move to the other side. We'll feed it through that slot and then open up the tabs to hold it in place. Now we're gonna put the Tada diorama aside and we're gonna cut a piece of paper that's gonna be four and a half by three and one sixteenth. And this is gonna help us create a piece that's gonna decorate those front panels. It's gonna be so cool. So we're gonna start off with some inking with Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn and Black Soot. And we're gonna be doing a very similar sky to the one we did on the background, but this time we're gonna do it in green. So we're gonna start with our light green towards the center, and then we're gonna bring our darker green from the outsides. And now you can start to see that glow kind of form. And we'll go back and forth between these two colors. Then to add our spooky Halloween feel, we're gonna take our black soot distress ink and go around the edges. Oh, and that looks so pretty. And like we did on our purple sky, we're gonna use that nighttime sky stencil and our Yeti pigment ink to build on some beautiful clouds here. Once again, making sure that some of the cards are in the center and some of the clouds are going off the edge to give it that feel that the sky keeps going on and on. And for some texture, once again, we're gonna smear the black ink. We're gonna spray a little bit of water. We'll mix that around with a paintbrush, pick up some of that ink, and then tap the paintbrush to create some black splatters. Then we'll do the same thing with the white acrylic paint. And we're gonna add those white splatters all around and I think this makes the sky feel so special. We're gonna let this background dry. And once it's all dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half because we have those two panels that are gonna split open. And by cutting it in half, it's gonna look like one continuous panel that then splits apart. And so what we're gonna do is add some adhesive to the back of these, and then we can layer them right over top of those front panels. This is gonna make it so that we have a green sky on the front, a purple sky on the back, and on the sides we have that beautiful black shimmery cardstock. So I think this is just so gorgeous. So once again, we'll add some more adhesive to the back, and then we can layer that onto the panel. And you'll see that I'll be able to kind of put them up against each other and make sure that they're perfectly lined up so that I have that continuous sky pattern. Now that we have that beautiful green sky on the front of those panels, we're gonna bring back that window frame with the bands that we added onto it earlier, and we're gonna be feeding these side panels through those bands. And so we'll see that we'll do that on one side and we'll also do it on the other side. And this is gonna secure our window frame on the front and it's gonna finish the rest of our Tada Diorama interactive mechanism. And this just looks so cool. I love it so much. And once I add that frame, I love to test it out. So right here, we're gonna put it down and ta-da! We have this awesome diorama. So I love this so much and I thought it would be really fun to bring in our spooky gate die and add a gate to the front of this so it looks like a gate is opening up. I thought this would be really fun. So I'm gonna add some adhesive on the back of this gate piece that we've die cut out of black licorice cardstock and then I'm gonna layer that right on that edge there. So right where the pieces separate, I'm just gonna kind of put it as close as I can and I'm also gonna tuck it underneath that little window frame just a teeny bit so that you kind of looks like the gate keeps going. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and that's gonna give us our opening gate. 
Now, obviously that gate isn't quite big enough for those panels, so what I did was I cut some more gates, and now is when I realized I needed to take off this little window frame here so that I could add those other gates on there. So it was really easy to just pop that off, and now I'm just gonna layer that next gate right next to it, just like that. So it's gonna give us kind of like this curved gate look. And then I can just take my scissors and trim off any of the excess on the sides. And then we can go ahead and add that window frame back on. So we can just slide our panels right on through, just like that. And we can test it out and ta-da, it's working great. So what we're gonna do is take out the wild wool stamp set and we're gonna bring in a bunch of these characters. I also have a wolf from the wolf before and afters too. And I love how you can combine them together. So for my howling wolf, I'm putting adhesive all over the back of him cause he's gonna layer on that back purple sky there. And I like layering things on the back sky and then each of the hills because it gives it this really cool three dimensional feel. We're also, of course, going to add our moon into that sky too because our little guy is howling towards the moon. For our next wolf, I'm going to flip him over and add adhesive just to the very bottom because he's going to be layering onto that back black glittery hill. Then we're going to work with this rock and that's going to go on the front hill. So I'm going to add some adhesive onto that and then layer that right onto the hill there. Then we're gonna take the little pup and the crow and layer them onto the rock. And so I'm gonna have the pup kind of sitting on those bottom rocks there. And then we're gonna add the crow to the top of the rock. Now, this is the moment with my Tada dioramas that I always like to check and make sure everything is working. And right now it wasn't completely closing. And I was like, huh, what's going on? Well, if this ever happens to you, for the Tada diorama to close shut, you need to make sure that you have all of your cute little characters in perfect placement. So I realized that all I needed to do was just lower this little guy here just a little bit and then it's going to close so perfectly, just like that. So sometimes you'll have to play around with your placement of your characters so that it works perfectly in the mechanism. And right now, oh my goodness, isn't that looking amazing? The last thing that this card needs is a sentiment. So I'm gonna be using the I love you a how lot sentiment, which is one of my personal favorites. And we're gonna stamp that in some black licorice ink on some fog cardstock, which is a very light gray, which I thought would look really nice with all of my different shades of gray on my wolves and moon and rock, etc. So the awesome Tada diorama comes with this super cute stitched banner die. So I went ahead and lined that up with my sentiment, ran it through the die cut machine, and now we're gonna be adding that to the top of the diorama. And so I'm just gonna add some adhesive to that and just kind of center that there right along the top. And I love that the sentiment and the pun is just a little hint as to what the recipient is going to see on the inside of the card. Now the next thing that we need to do is create a card base. And we've made a card base that's the exact size of the Tada diorama, which is four and a half by three and a quarter. You could also put this on an A2 size card too, and that would look super cute too, but I personally love a mini card. So here you can see how cute this is turning out. And what I love about the Tada diorama is it folds completely flat, which makes it perfect for mailing. You can put it in a standard envelope with standard postage. And here I'm gonna take my brand new Ghoul's Night Out washi tape, and I'm gonna add that to my envelope. I of course could then put my address and pop it in the mail. And oh my goodness, is this gonna surprise the recipient? And I just love how perfectly it fits in the envelope. And here we have the spooky gate. And as we open it up, ta-da, you get this amazing image. I love that it looks like the gate is opening. And how cute is this fun wild wolf scene? I love these little wolves so much. They are just so super cute and so sweet. I love the three dimensions on this card. It is just so cool and so amazing. These just make me smile so much. And these little wolves make me smile so much. I literally just can't stop smiling when I stamp them. I think they are so super sweet. And of course, earlier we made a winter card and here's kind of a more Halloween-y type card. And I wanted to show you a Tada diorama that we made in the intro to Tada diorama video, which is also the wolves, but a wintry version. So I love that these little wolves are perfect for this new interactive and I love that you could take them from so many different occasions and seasons too. Next up, Shari is going to make the most gorgeous Halloween card. It is so beautiful. And then after that, I'll be making a magic picture changer. So take it away, Shari. 
So I'm creating a Halloween card today using the new Wild Wolves and I'll also be pulling in this little spider in this little treat bucket from Fantastic Friends. I've already colored and cut out all my images and I'll set those aside. Then I'm pulling out the new Spiffier Speckles 6x6 pad and I'm going to be using the white paper here with the gold flecks on it. So I'm just cutting this down to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the size of my A2 card. And I'm going to be doing ink blending on this. And this is going to basically give me that beautiful gold splatter that I always like to do, but it's already done for me. I'm also going to take a piece of cilantro cardstock and cut it to four and a quarter as well. And then I will cut this with one of the simple stitched hillside borders, and this will be my ground. So I'm just kind of lining this up where I want it to be. I am remaking a card that I had made previously, so I kind of know how far up this needs to go. So here are my two pieces of cardstock that will create my scene, and we're going to really transform them though. So for my sky, I had a purple sky with gold flecks, so I'm using Wilted Violet and Villainous Potion. And I was starting out with the Wilted Violet, and you can see I started with a brush, but then I switched over to a foam blending tool because it allowed me to put more ink down more quickly because I want this to be a dark night sky. I am avoiding the bottom down there because that is where the green cardstock is going to go, so I really don't need to spend any time ink blending down at the bottom. Once I have a good base of that Wilted Violet, I'm moving on to the Villainous Potion. And this is going to give me that really, really deep, dark purple. Now because this is pattern paper, it's really taking that ink in. So I was going to add a little bit of black soot around the outside and really darken it up, but I did not feel like I needed to once I got this Villainous Potion on there. I got enough of it on there to where it really made a dark edge and I liked the way it looked so I didn't feel like I needed to add any black. And you can see that my gold flecks that I like to do so much are already done for me because of this paper which I just think is great. Now for the ground I want to darken that up a bit too because it's a little too bright for a nighttime scene. So I have my Lucky Clover Distress Oxide and I'm just pulling that color down from the top edge. I am going to stamp my sentiment before I assemble. I'm using a combination of sentiments from Wild Wolves. I'm using the sentiment that says enjoy it to the fullest. That will go along the bottom. And then I'm going to use that Happy Halloween with those open letters from Fantastic Friends and layer that on top. So I'll just line this up along the bottom, make sure it's nice and centered. And I'll just pick that up with the door of my Misty and stamp this in some black ink. Now because those letters of that Happy Halloween are open, I'm going in with a white colored pencil and just coloring these in. You could color these with any color you like. I just like the white. It kind of makes it stand out a little bit more, but it's still kind of ghosty because it's not super bright white. And I think that really goes with the look of this card. Also, since we are coloring on some colored cardstock, colored pencils are a great way to add some interest to that sentiment. Now I can put adhesive all over that piece of pattern paper that I've inked up and add that to my card base. Then I will do the same with the hill that goes along the bottom. And I'm using some tape runner for this so I can kind of lift that top edge because I'm going to be tucking those trees behind the top edge. So I've got the little tree and the big tree colored and cut out here. And you could put these on the front of it because it does have that nice root detail in the design. But I knew I was going to have a lot of images in front of them, so I kind of wanted that clean edge of the hill. Next, I'm adding my bright moon to the sky. And then I'm doing some stamping before I add my wolves. So there is a stamp in the set that says Howl. And I'm just going to stamp that directly between those two trees right on that background. 
it's going to end up right in the perfect placement for this cute little wolf here that's going to be howling. So I'm adding him to that rock as well as that treat bucket, which is from the Fantastic Friends. Also, this little spider is from Fantastic Friends, and I've just trimmed off his string, and I'm adding him to that big tree. I'm also adding the little bird or crow that's in the Wild Wolf set. And then I'm adding some thin foam squares all over the back of this little assembly of the wolf on his stone. Then I can pop him right in the center. He is the centerpiece of my card. Then for my little wolves that are going to go on both sides, I'm using some regular thickness foam squares. So I have two layers of dimension between the thin foam squares and the regular foam squares. And then I will also add this little rock here. I'm just going to tuck that right behind that wolf right there in the front. Now I can add my glitter to my images. I'm using stardust stickles, adding it to the trees and the stone, a little bit to the spider. I'll also add some to the moon, of course, and then a little bit on that treat bucket. And then here is my finished card. And I really love this new Wild Wolf stamp set. I think it is so fun. It can be used for any time of the year. And then that gold foil in the sky is just perfect. Oh my goodness, Shari, this card is perfection. And I love that gold foil so much too. And now I am so excited about creating a magic picture changer. And here you can see I have two pieces of cardstock that I'm gonna be stamping on to create my two magic picture changer panels. So first I'm gonna stamp the wolf from Wolf Before and Afters that's sitting. And then I'm gonna stamp the howling wolf on the other paper. And here you can see how the different dies from the magic picture changer are gonna line up over these characters. Now to complete my scene for my little howling wolf, I am going to stamp a moon and I'm just using that little viewfinder on this die to kind of see where exactly I need to stamp that moon. Then I can go ahead and stamp the moon. And of course, I also need to stamp the Aroo because I think that is just so super cute. And that moon is from the Wild Wolf stamp set. And now you can start to see how that scene is gonna look. Now the next thing we need to do is add some color to the wolves and also create their little scenes. So I use that same warm gray marker combination that I used at the beginning of the video. And now I'm gonna color in a ground. And I'm making that ground right where his feet kind of jut in. That's where I'm gonna put the ground. And the reason I'm remembering that is I'm gonna repeat that on my other wolf there. Because these are kind of like one picture of two different scenes. So there you can see I've added my brown marker and then I'm just kind of blending them out. So they look pretty similar. Now I'm going to have the skies be two different colors. So my sky on my sitting wolf is going to be purple. So I just brought out a bunch of different shades of purple and I'm just kind of layering my markers and then just going back and forth between the colors to create a nice blend. For this sky, I'm going to add a yellow glow around the moon and then I'm going to build up a dark blue sky. So it's going to be dark blue towards the bottom and then I'm going to blend it up into a lighter blue. And then as the blue and the yellow overlap some, I'm just gonna kinda go back and forth between the colors to create a really cool moon glow. If you've never made a magic picture changer before, make sure to check out our intro video. We'll link it in the description below. So now here I have my two magic picture changer pieces. And you'll see on this larger one, there's like this little viewfinder window and I'm gonna line that up with my scene and then hold it in place with the low tack tape. The bigger one is always your first picture and the smaller one is your second picture. So there you can see we now have our die cut piece. Then what I'm gonna do is take the smaller one, which is our second picture. We're gonna look through the viewfinder window and we're gonna try to make this scene look exactly the same so that the ground is about the same height and the sky is about the same. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you can eyeball it and make sure they're looking pretty similar. And now we have both of our pieces for the magic picture changer. Now we're gonna work on the bigger piece here and this die creates some score lines there on the side that make some little skinny tabs. And so I'm gonna fold along those tabs and then I'm gonna use my bone folder to reinforce them to make sure that it's a nice sharp fold. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And this is a pretty skinny fold so I'm just taking my time as I fold it. And there you can see we have our second tab which I'll reinforce with the bone folder. Now the next thing we need is eighth inch double-sided tape. 
we're going to be putting this tape on the inside of each of these tabs and also on the outside of each of these tabs for a total of four different strips of tape. So here you can see I've got it on the inside of the tabs and then we're going to flip it over and put it on the outside of the tabs. So now we've got one side and the other side. Next, we're gonna flip it back over and we're gonna peel up the liner paper and press down to secure those tabs in. They're now gonna become like little guide rails for our moving piece. So there you can see, we're just gonna push down. I also like to take my bone folder now and just press down on all of these to make sure that it's nice and secure. One of my tips and tricks to make your magic picture changer work really well is to use an anti-static powder tool or baby powder. We're going along those little tabs that we secured down and also all of those little pieces there that the die cut for us on the front and the back. We're also going to repeat the same thing on our smaller piece too. So we're going to go all the way on the front and all the way on the back. And the reason for this is this baby powder reduces the friction and makes these panels move really, really easily between each other. Now there's another score line on our main base piece and it's right in the center. And so we're gonna fold along that line. And once again, we're gonna use our bone folder to make sure that we have a nice sharp crease. Now the next thing we need to do is open this guy up because we're going to feed this smaller piece through, making sure that we're seeing the fronts of both of those pictures, just like that. Now you'll see that there's all of these little slots there in that one, and there's all these little tabs on the bigger one. We're gonna fit each tab into each slot. So one, two, three, four. They're gonna fit right in there. And you'll know that you fit them through perfectly because you can see that your little image is going to move. Then what we're gonna do is open it up. I always like to make sure that this piece is actually between those two little guardrails that we created. Make sure it's nice and centered. Once you know that that's nice and centered, then we can peel up the liner paper on both of these tabs. Once we peel up the liner paper, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the whole thing shut, kind of folding it in half, and that's gonna secure this whole piece together. And now we're gonna have this really amazing interactive magic picture changer, which is so cool. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're gonna work with the Magic Picture Changer add-on which gives you this cool decorative frame and we're also gonna actually be die cutting that shorter, smaller Magic Picture Changer piece again because that's gonna give us a piece to decorate our tab. And that's gonna be all out of this gray shimmery cardstock that's just so pretty. Once we have both of these pieces die cut, the first thing that we're gonna do is actually trim off that tab. And this is a fun way to add a different color to the tab of your Magic Picture Changer. Right now it's white, which would still look great, but this gray shimmer is gonna be super pretty. So we're just gonna trim that right off, and then we can add some adhesive to the back of it, and then we're gonna layer it right onto the tab. And we're gonna make sure that we pull that tab out all the way, and then make sure we kinda tuck it in right there and then layer it over top. Then the next thing we need to do is die cut the decorative tab that comes with the Magic Picture Changer. This is not only decorative and it tells the recipient what to do, but it's also a functional stopper as well that's gonna keep your Magic Picture Changer from kind of just sliding all the way out through the card. So we're gonna add a bunch of adhesive onto that and then we're just gonna fold it right over this tab and the tab is gonna fit right into the fold and you'll see that now we have that cool little arrow and it's also gonna work as a stopper. I wanted that little arrow to have some sparkle and really be noticeable. So I decided to take some holographic cardstock here and just die cut that same die. But I'm just gonna use that little arrow that it cuts. We'll add some adhesive onto that and we can just drop that right in there, just inlay it. And now we have this beautiful, sparkly, cool little piece. Now for this Magic Picture Changer add-on, you wanna put adhesive from corner to corner in all four corners and then you could have put adhesive along the top and the bottom. You don't want any adhesive along the sides because that would keep the mechanism from working. Then you're just gonna line that up. You'll see there's kind of like a little indent at the top of it. You'll line it up with the tab and that's gonna give this really cool finished look. Now remember when we were introducing that starry sky background hot foil plate and we hot foiled those stars on some black cardstock? We're gonna use that piece now and we're gonna be die cutting that with a stitched rectangle die. And how pretty is this? I just love it. And then we'll take a card base and we'll add some adhesive to that and then layer that onto the card base. Then we're gonna add some foam squares to the back of the Magic Picture Changer piece. I like adding foam squares here because it makes it easy to grab that tab and pull to see the magic happen. Then we can layer this onto our beautiful hot foiled starry sky. 
And the next thing that we need is a sentiment. So we're gonna be taking out this really pretty stitched wavy banner die here, and we're gonna be using the sentiment that comes in the wolf before and afters, which I think is so sweet. And one thing I love about clear stamps is that we can curve them to fit anything. So we're gonna curve this stamp to fit this super cute curved banner. Then we can stamp the How Always Be Your Friend in some black licorice ink right onto this white cardstock, and it's gonna be this really great bold greening. Then we can take this and layer this onto the Magic Picture Changer, and I'm gonna add some adhesive to this, and I really like when this layers over the window just a little bit, so you'll see we're just gonna kinda of like bring it up just like that and layer that, and there's something about that that I think is so pretty, and as we pull the tab, you can see the magic happen. I mean, look at this, how cute! You have your sitting wolf and your howling wolf. It's so sweet with the sentiment. It really would be fun with the I miss you a how lot or I love you a how lot sentiment as well. I think this is so cute and just so much fun. I could look at this all day. I just love it so much and it was so much fun to create. And next up, we have the most incredible cards by the design team, starting off with a card by Audrey that is just beautiful. That purple sky is incredible and I love her inked moon in the background. This card by Callie is so sweet. I love her little family and the super sweet sentiment and that beautiful blue sky. I love that these wolves are perfect for winter cards and they fit so wonderfully in the brand new Tada diorama. This card here by Elena is stunning. That sky is amazing and I love that this design could be a year-round card. This one here by Elise is so sweet and I love her holiday feel and beautiful little snow in the background. Here, Grace used the awesome new Starry Sky to create the most beautiful Cinderella themed card. I love this starry background. And then this card by Lynette is so pretty. I love the square size and the beautiful sky that she created. Here, I love what a great fit the Wild Wolves is for the spooky forest backdrop. He looks so cute there between the spooky gates. And then this card by Megan is so much fun and she created a really cool pool tab. And what I love is the moon comes up. I think this is just so sweet. Now here Maureen created a magic picture changer and as she pulls the wolf howls and she integrated the magic picture changer into her scene in the most incredible way. I am in so in love. And speaking of Maureen, she has another incredible card. Look at this slimline card and the wintry feel. I think it's just stunning. This card here by Tammy is amazing. The sky and the colors are just beautiful. I love this card a how lot. And then this card by Leticia is so much fun. I love the mountains that she created and her unique colors. So we cannot wait to see what you guys do with these new hot foil plates and the beautiful wild wolves and wolf before and after. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.